that you know people they have this belief of that, that police don't lie and stuff but it's like no they lie they lie they put the l in lie are you kidding me mm-hmm. <laughs> and but but the thing is another way that we're culturally conditioned right People will believe the police, the law enforcement officials, because of their position, right? Mm -hmm. So when it comes to indicting them and to getting it to a place where they're actually found guilty, it becomes that much more difficult because the mindset that most people have that, well, they're law enforcement, they're going to tell the truth, they're not going to do these things, but the opposite is true. They are actually perpetrating lie after lie and killing our loved ones without any accountability oh heck yeah they have no no problem and and the thing is the line of corruption the network um that you got the judges you got the secretaries you got the you got the coroner mm -hmm. you, you 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 have uh the the ambulance uh, everyone is mm -hmm. connected they're, they're so comfortable in what they do because they this qualified immunity gets them off the hook they oh, ain't got no good. problem in that narrative even if the narratives don't even match like it did in ronnie's case uh even the medical uh the doctor at the medical center he was saying this doesn't add up because the police reports that was given to him they didn't match can you hear anything good evening my name is roxanne johnson my son's name is jamal bird he was killed by dc metropolitan police on October 1st, 2019. I'm here with my co-host this evening, my lovely, there she is. Good evening, Toya, how are you doing? I'm better, can you guys hear me? Yep, we can hear you just fine. I went to go click on, the, and now a dog wants to lick my leg. I went to click on a different button, I want like a log on me. But anyway, hey y'all, I'm here. My name is Latoya Benton. Um, I am the mother of Xavier Hill. Xavier was killed at the age of 18 years old by two Virginia State Troopers, January the 9th, 2021. We are honored tonight to be, doing, to be joined by Bell Charade Perry. Ms. Perry, you want to go ahead and give a quick intro of yourself, please? Yes, hi, and good evening, everyone. Um, <clears throat> my name is Delshia Perry. I'm the mother of Hardell Sherl who was medically neglected and left to die in a jail cell in the Beltrami County Jail in Northern Minnesota back in 2018. And I'm also the founder and president of Be Their Voices. Thank you so much, you all, for having me. We, we, we are so um, honored to have you this, at, this evening. And so tell us a little bit about the um, circumstances that led to your son's um, expiring in um in custody yes uh well in um august of 2018 he was being transported from another jail into the jail so he was actually uh preparing you know for this time to go to jail um uh, hardell was facing a uh, felony possession firearm and um in one of the pictures that i sent you can see he's got his head his hair dreaded and uh, he knows that what he's about to face is probably three to five years. But he's ready to own up to what he's done. Uh, but nonetheless, Hardell is in custody. He gets sick after three days. And he calls me in tears. And he says, Mama, I cannot feel my arms. I can't feel my legs. He says, I need a wheelchair. They won't give me a wheelchair. I had never heard my son cry like this. So I knew there was something seriously wrong, but I didn't know <clears throat> that he was as ill as he was and that he was actually dying. Mm -hmm. My son was diagnosed, um, what they put on his um, death certificate, excuse me, I'm getting choked up, was that he had died of pneumonia, but Hardell did not die of pneumonia. He died of GBS, which is uh, Guillain-Barre syndrome. And uh, Guillain-Barre syndrome is where your immune system attacks your nervous system and you shut down inside out. And it's a slow, uh, progressive, but slow. Um, it's very treatable, um, but if it's not treated, then of course it's fatal. And in my son's case, it was just that. He kept telling me that they didn't believe him. They thought he was faking. Every one that went in to see him, the nurses and whoever else was there, the correctional officers, they all thought he was faking it. Um, 
after about five days in, Cardell was in adult depends. Mm. They did eventually give him a, a wheelchair. So wait, out of five days in, he was an adult depends? Yes. Wow. And they thought he was faking it. So yes, he was um, struggling, of course, with walking, let alone um, using, you know, the bathroom. And uh, the jail administrator, after um, six days, had denied him to go to the hospital because she said, well, he's trying to escape. And my thing is, how was a man going to run if he couldn't even walk? <laughs> the um, attorney that was involved in our case, his name is uh, Lederman, Zorislav Lederman, and his paralegal, Michelle Gross, who is amazing. She actually runs an organization here um, called Communities United Against Police Brutality. And she did a phenomenal job. She was the one that actually told me she was also, she's also a retired nurse. So she actually told me what my son was actually suffering from and what was going on with him before the jail and anybody in the jail was able to tell me anything. I had never even heard of GBS until Michelle Gross came on the scene. At any rate, so we're gathering information and we're coming to find out that yes, he was neglected, he was abused. I mean, it was it was horrific. It was, he died an egregious, slow, agonizing death. He They tortured him. Um, Stephanie Lumblad is the whistleblowing nurse in, in our case. And I hate to call her a whistleblowing nurse, but she did. She tried to help save my son's life. She got there and saw that he was in excruciating pain and he was, you know, telling her, you know, please, you know, help me uh, tell my family I love them, you know, and it was it was horrible. And she said, well, we're going to get you to the hospital. Well, she did. But unbeknownst to her, they had sent him right back. Mm. And two days, two days later, my uh, baby died. Mm -hmm. They brought him back into the jail. They threw him, and videos are all over the internet. If you Google uh, my organization, again, it's called Be Their Voices. Um, if you go in and Google my son's name, his name is Hardell Cheryl, and it's a very unique name. It's spelled, his last name is spelled S-H-E-R-R-E-L-L. -L. It looks like Sherelle, but it's actually pronounced Cheryl, like the girl's name. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you Google his name, you'll see all of these videos. And I did that. I released those videos because people said that he was faking it. And, and I'm thinking, how in the heck can you, you say that this young man walks into the jail healthy and happy and in pretty good spirits knowing he is facing possible you know prison time for five years and my thing of it is is you know what happened to being innocent until proven guilty right not days in so right due process absolutely but that didn't happen my baby never got his day in court so his mama is praying now that after five years because it's been five years we have sued civilly. We took the doctor's license. We revoked his license. We have bankrupt him. Okay. We are look at his name is Todd Leonard, for those of you who want to know. The nurse in this case who ignored my son's cries, she was the very last person to lay eyes on him, did not take his vitals. If she would have, he may be still alive to this day. In fact, I know he would. Oh. Um, but she refused to do any of that, any medical anything. And Michelle Scrock is her name. And mm. now the attorney general has our case. And we've since been waiting for whatever other, they say, uh, has to be done as far as investigating, um, because they've said that there's, it's very complicated. They've been saying our case is very complicated because there are so many people involved. Oh, and I'm, yeah, that's, yeah, just a, I, I feel it's just a put off, right? Uh, but I won't give up hope in my, in my, in my heavenly father, because okay. see, that's what has kept me going is the fact that I am a minister and I'm a woman of God and have great faith to say, I know it's already done, even though it's not, because while I, they I think, think there's, yes, while they think they're stringing me along and oh, it's wow. been over five years, We've mm -hmm. gotten uh, our civil case has been, you know, settled and they thought, oh, pay them some money, get rid of them. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. There must mm -hmm. be accountability in mm -hmm. my son's case. 
-hmm. I chose to show the public what happened based on what Emmett Till's mama did when mm -hmm. she had that coffin open and showed the world what they had done to her baby boy. And that mm -hmm. was the same decision that I made was to show what they had done to my son. They left him at one point face down when he got back from the hospital they, they he fell out of the out of out of his bunk trying to lift his head up because he was paralyzed he mm -hmm. fell out of his bunk face down and they left him there for 8 hours mm -hmm. okay in this process we have passed a law called the Hardell Sherrill Act which uh we have worked i mean we've worked so hard on this law to help save lives because I I just refused to be so devastated that I was paralyzed yeah, right. myself and, and mm -hmm. couldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. And so I too though when it comes to like um like we were saying earlier, when it comes to we think about uh police brutality, we automatically think about on the streets. This happened in the jail. And oftentimes they say, people say, okay, they say, well, just comply. Uh, they'll, 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 they'll just arrest you, right? Okay, well, then what if they just arrest you? And you go to jail and you don't come back out, yeah. you know? And oftentimes that's what's happening. Um, yeah. And it happens far too often. We don't know about these names. I didn't know about, about your son's name until Melissa bought this up. But now we, now we do know. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and all life, all life, no matter what the circumstances or the situation deserves to be respected and protected. And so if you, if, if you system are going to keep building these, all of these uh, institutions, these uh, huge uh, mega uh, prisons, then you, you have a responsibility to each and every human being that's yes. within that facility to make that's sure so. that they receive the care that they need when something happens to them. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it didn't, ex exactly. And it didn't happen in our case, right? It didn't. Unfortunately, it didn't. So now we, we got to come together and make something happen even more than passing the law. And the law, we got bipartisan support to pass this law because they realized that, oh my goodness, this young man didn't get basic medical care while right. in the custody of a state, yes, of a, right. a state-owned right. jail. That's, That's right. ridiculous. That's it, right. it is unacceptable. It has to stop. Mm -hmm. um, and in 2021, when we passed the Hardell Sherrill uh, Act, um, there's a graph that I sent in. If you could pull that up, I just want to uh, make note of why I'm, I'm I'm bringing this to you all's attention. Mm -hmm. Now, can you pull the graph up? Very good. In 2021, it's kind of hard to see, but the lowest of all of these graphs that you see those those blue bars, 2021, mm -hmm. the year that we actually passed the Hardell Sherrill Act was the lowest number of deaths. But then the very next year, it's like they went back it's to doing like business that, that. as usual. And mm -hmm. then the numbers skyrocketed. And then they've been going up ever since. And yeah. I'm thinking to myself, this is insane. How can this be? Thanks to Michelle Gross, we, we gave her the information. Michelle Gross came up with this graph to show visually what the numbers look like. And there are so many that I don't even know all the names. I'm, I'm a very small organization. As I said, we started in 2020. We were recognized in the state of Minnesota uh, as a uh, nonprofit in 2020, but we didn't become um, official under the federal guidelines, of course, and become tech tax exempt until 2023, just this year, uh, earlier this year. So I'm so grateful for that. But at the same time, it's like, okay, now will you guys give us the money that we need to continue to address these issues and really bring about uh, real reform? Uh, because this is like a Band-Aid on a gushing wound. And yes. until they put the money where it needs to go, it will continue to be just that. Yes. We know yes. that, that there are people in jail who have mental health issues. We want to be able to tap into some other resources that can connect and partner up with our organization that can address those mental health issues. We mm -hmm. also want to be able to have a call center 
okay? So that when these families are calling and crying out for help, they've got somebody who's listening. They want to know that somebody cares. Somebody's going to take the time to listen to what has happened to their loved one or what is happening to their loved one in real time, right? Uh -huh. So that we can get, so that we can be pre, uh, pr you know, uh, productive and, and doing What's something there? proactively. Exactly. Exactly. We want to be proactive instead of reactive. Right. Uh -huh. And so but we need money to be able to do that. And I have been working tirelessly uh, for five years. My brother, Traron Cruz, who's uh, also uh, Black Lives Matter, uh, he five days in said, sis, we got to go put we, we got to go put boots on the ground. And I was just devastated. I wasn't ready to. I was like, what? He's like, yep, we got to go to the Capitol. We got to call a, we got to call a, a press conference. We got to go. So my brother, Traheron Cruz with Black Lives Matter, has been there with me from day one, literally. Uh, we went to Fox 9 News. Paul, Paul uh, Bloom started to cover the story. And then eventually it got to the point where we were uncovering so much that we needed to have more coverage, more in-depth coverage. So we, I started praying. I'm like, God, point me in the right direction. I need a, a reporter, not to say that anything bad about Paul Bloom and Fox 9, because they did do a good job, but I needed them to take it a step further. I needed oh, them to oh. go a little bit deeper, okay? Because this is my baby. This was my only child we're talking about, you know? And uh, so we finally got in contact with an A.J. Legault, who's with Care 11 News. And A.J. Legault, he dug deep. And when he started to dig and we started to talk, we were able to figure out that there were 55 other deaths that we had no idea about. So now there are these other investigations from the work that he and I have done together, from oh. the work that I have done to say, I'm not taking no for an answer. I'm mm -hmm. gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep moving. I'm gonna keep marching. I'm gonna keep talking. And God knows I got to keep praying because it is prayer that changes things. It's what's kept me going. The That's strength right. of God himself, his right. grace is what has kept me going right. in this fight. Because if I didn't have the Lord on my side, I don't really know where I would be, probably in the loony bin. Because to see how my son, I wished my son had been shot. He would have at least died right away, right? right. Within a few minutes, maybe a few seconds. But, but no, my baby. Being tortured. Exactly. He suffered. Did I hear you say he was your only child? He was yeah. my only child. Yes. So that's, well, and that kind of points out with me too, the Xavier of my only son as well. Oh my and, and I think a lot of times too, I even have an issue um, I watched the video, right? But when it comes to certain things, as far as like photos, yes. I can't bring myself to see those because yeah. I, I can't, like you just said, because I know Xavier was shot and he died instantly. Mm -hmm. I know that he didn't suffer. Right. But when you know your son sat there mm -hmm. and suffered and the very people who were supposed to be protecting your son did nothing. And right. even I think too, again, I think it goes back to when we thought all the time, we think it's just looking for police, you know? When it comes to institutions, like you said, to the doctors, the lawyers, yeah. the nurses, they're all so responsible. So we yes. gotta make sure we get like Roxanne loves all the time. We gotta use all the tools in the that's toolbox. True. That's all right. the tools in the toolbox. That's important. We gotta go out to everybody. That's yes. the main thing. Yes, accountability has to come. Yeah. Um, if accountability doesn't come, this will continue as usual. Yeah. And when you talk about, and if I could just take a moment, because I it mentioned to you, I called the Minnesota Department of uh, Corrections because on our website, when someone goes in and they have a complaint, they can go on our website and they can fill out what's called the inmate advocate form. It's actually a complaint form, but we don't call it that, right? Because we want to make sure that they're able to go in and put that information in and fill out the formal complaint with the DOC. And we linked up our website with theirs so that people could go in and make that complaint so that the DOC couldn't say we didn't know. Right. We, we ain't doing none of that, okay? Right. So that's right. just one tool on our website that we've been able to give uh, the families, you know, to be able to tell what is going on uh, with their loved one while they're in jail. If they should become sick, if anything should happen to them while they're in 
in custody. Um, we have, uh, through the Hardell Sherrill Act, we were able to uh, get what's called the release of information form so that even though there's the HIPAA law and there's so much, there's only so much that they can share, we wanted to make sure that there was this form that when they are in custody, before they get ill, of course, um, they fill that form out. It's called the release of information, okay, form. We wanted to call it the HSA form, the Hard L. Sherrill Act form, so that everybody, so we're working on that right now, so that everybody understands that when they're in jail, this is a form that will could possibly save your life. Because if yeah. they get so sick that they become incoherent, in, incapacitated, they, they don't have the ability to speak or write for them, you know, write any information down, they have released the jail to go and call mom, dad, brother, sister, whoever that next of uh, kin is to contact them to let them know that he's getting sent to uh, Hennepin County Medical Center because he's fallen sick or she's fallen ill and we're having to take her, you know, over here. So at least they're not in the dark like I was not knowing. I didn't even know. I didn't know my baby was dying. I knew he was ill, but I didn't know he was dying. Wow. And if I can just read off some of these names, because there's so many, and I'm just going to read off a few from this year because I'm just disgusted, right? Uh, before you read the names, um, yes. how many have um, transitioned in custody this year so far for in Minnesota? Oh. It, what? Okay, repeat your question because I'm not understanding. How many, what how many human beings? Yes, transitioned in custody in the state in state of Minnesota, Minnesota prison or jail for 2023? Do you know? No, I don't know how many have been incarcerated in, in this year. And the reason no, why- said transition, like as Lawrence Clark, like have died in jail. Have died right. in jail. Right, and that I do have. That's the number. So far, 16 this year. That's too many. That's yeah. way too many. Again, like yeah. I said, the lowest number was the year we passed the hardell Sherrill Act, which was eight. The next year, I believe it was uh, 13. The very next year, what? How does those numbers should have been going down? Mm -hmm. um, but these numbers, uh, these these names, I just want to read off a few of these names, mm -hmm. and then I just want to take a moment of silence for everyone, um, because this is not acceptable. Right. And this has to stop. This has to stop. Ryan Wolziak, Melvin Bush, John Mayo, Kuvu, Nicholas Norman, David Mills, Dennis Kipp, Aaron Gafke, Miles Jackson, whose mother I've met, Christian Revere Koba, who's also whose mother I've also met, Dustin Egert, Patrick Nash, whose family I've tried to reach out to. Oscar Rodriguez Corona, who I'm trying to find. Larry Hill, whose mother I've also spoken to. Those names are just names from this year. And I have not met all of them. I've been searching to try and get connected with them. And if anybody out here is hearing this and has heard those names, please have them contact us because if nothing else, we at least want to pray for them. We want to pray for them. We want so I want to remind you guys too that um, as you read those names, that list is only from Minnesota. It is, right? yes. This so is you mind, Minnesota. But that's from Minnesota. We have 50 states out here. So just imagine, imagine how many other names are out there that don't even get heard of and yes. families out here fighting, you know? So yeah. this happens all the time, unfortunately. Yes. And like she so, said, we have to be the ones who speak for the ones who can't speak for themselves. Absolutely. When it comes to people that are incarcerated, we, if they tell us to comply, so we can so-called get due process, be sure to go into jail, serve whatever time it is or not, and bring your ass home. It shouldn't be in going to jail. And then and let me ask you a question, as far as the, the officers themselves or just the institution themselves, what happened with, with, with um, the county or anything? Did anything happen with them outside of the civil suit? Um, 
you know what? Yes. And I want to, I want to delve into that, but, I, but I just want to just take a moment of peace to just, just, just to pray silently, just, just one, like 30 Please. seconds, because my heart is heavy. Please. Let us just take a moment of silence for all these lives that have been taken behind the wall. Thank you. And I pray for them all. Um, as you all know, um, mothers, we wear many hats, right? And then when you add on more layers as a minister, you wear even more hats and you just do what you have to. Um, <clears throat> but we are strong people and uh, we, we, we can get through this together. Um, and I'm just so grateful to God for each one of you ladies here tonight um, because it's us coming together to bring awareness about what is happening. So to answer your question, the civil lawsuit is over. We've, we've sued everybody that we can sue. We got what we are going to get. And his three daughters, Hardell has three little girls, Kalia, mm -hmm. Savannah, and Ketsia. Ages. 12, nine, and, and eight, will soon to be 10. They're, they're all two years apart. And um, they don't have a father. Mm. The jail, the state of Minnesota failed my son and they failed his daughters. And so that is another reason why I fight like I do, because I fight for my babies now. I fight for my son. I fight for people I don't even know, but I fight for those girls so that they will know who their father was because there's enough negativity out there. When, when our babies die, the first thing they wanna do is demonize them. Yep. And I have to be the one to say, uh-uh, that's not who your father was. This is who you're, because they're not gonna tell the good parts of who he was. He was a kind, gentle giant. He was sweet. He was the life of the party. He was a comedian. He would give the shirt off his back. He was always, he was a mama's boy. He was crazy about his babies and he was crazy about his mama. He loved the Lord and he knew him personally. And so that's who they don't know. What they think they know isn't who he was. My son suffered with drugs. Surely he had some issues. But again, like I said, and until we get to the bottom of what is going on, the cause, that root, mental health, drug abuse, alcoholism, whatever it might be, we've got to get to the root. And that, that, that costs money. And when we applied for $400,000 from the Ilhan Omar's uh, OJP uh, fund um, last year, we didn't get anything. And um, someone from their office said, you have to be in the fifth district. And I thought, what do you mean? I have to be in the, I'm in every, I work in all the jails. All the well, yeah. the state I'm in every district. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. And I'm, and I'm angry about that. So if somebody's hearing this, and they want to go and talk to Ilhan Omar's office and say, Miss Perry would like to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you about getting funding. Yes, we need it. They've got it. We need it. And I don't understand why organizations like ours have to beg, so, you know, and, and do so much. Yeah. Uh -huh. When you see the work is being done, we're getting the work done. You know, I work to get a law passed. That was months. That was, I mean, that was a lot of work to even start an organization. Everybody knows what it takes to run an organ, a nonprofit organization. You're creating, you're designing, and you're building, and you're working it all at the same time. And then on top of that, got to pay for some money to have to make it happen. That ain't right. That ain't right. And so they me, need to. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Let me let me let me see if I can um, interject a little bit here yes. for you. I get so, the assumption, so the assumption is that the system mm. that we're building to fight the system that's corrupt from the floor up yes. is, interesting, is interested in accountability. They ain't interested in no accountability. Exactly. <laughs> and, and, and that's what I, 
Yeah. yeah. And so, and so, and so we are the ones we've been waiting for, Ms. We. Del we. Yeah. we. And so uh, we can we, all we, get up off of our convenience, right? Uh, get yeah. up off of our comfortability. That's right. Get up off of our easy chair mm -hmm. and, and take some money, some current, because all money is is resources. And exactly. money ain't nothing but resources. That's all it is. That's right. Take sister. some of your resources and put it to stuff that's going to matter to the community. Community. Come on now. Yeah, that part right there. Yeah. So yeah. now, so now you were talking to us about a fundraiser before you before we uh, went live this evening. Yes. What's your yeah. fundraiser about, and how can we actively contribute? Yes, thank you so much. As I had said, you know, I've been asking for funds from everywhere and have been getting <laughs> shut down. And, you know, Chantel Allen, bless her heart, you know, she said to me, she said, sis, I know why they're not giving you funding. She said, I, I know exactly why they're not giving you funding, because if they give you the kind of funding that you were asking for, they know what's going to happen. They know what what they don't really want real reform real jail reform oh. real change no they just want to put a band-aid on, Band on it mm -hmm. and that is not okay it is unacceptable so yeah. i said okay then we have to start a, we have to start our own nonprofit. i mean our own um fundraiser excuse me and i didn't want to do that because again that's a lot to juggle. It's a lot of work pulling together, uh, you know, a fundraiser. But I said, you know what, God, if you give me the strength to do it, then I'll do it. So mm -hmm. we we got together and we said, you know what, we have to give we have to give people an opportunity to have their voices heard. We need to be able to have more resources for these families. Mm -hmm. um, we uh, we advocate for the families. Uh, it, like this, like going on podcast shows, you know, talking, sharing their stories on the radio, TV, whoever will give us an opportunity to speak and share their stories. We want to make sure that people hear, you know, uh, the names of Revere Coba, uh, you know, uh, you know, Larry Hill. We want people to know who is Larry Hill, who is Christian Revere Coba, who is Hardell Sherl. We want people to remember and say their names, but we need to be able to do more marketing. So we and marketing costs money. And so we need to be able to, yes, we need to create, get these funds so that we can do more marketing, so that we can get the information into these jails so that people will know what it is that we do. We want to build a, uh, not, not, necessarily, not necessarily a crisis line, but a, a, a helpline, if you will, where when they call in, they're able to tell us what's going on in real time with their loved ones in a jail. And then we can get them, of course, connected to other resources. But again, that's time and time is money. We need more volunteers. I need a personal uh oh, I think sound went are, out. Yeah, I think she's on yes. mute somehow. Well, I want to say real fast too, as well. Even when it comes just, to, I want to kind of go back to the funding portion too, as well, because I kind of, I want the community to kind of like understand what you're saying about the funding portion of it, and kind of like tying what Roxanne was saying as well. Um, yes. We, as a women, we say we. We talk about us as a community. People who are watching yeah. this podcast, y'all are the we. The people who are yeah. at your dinner table, that is the we. We got to begin to fund our own selves. Um, there was a, I can't remember the exact story that it was, but y'all, um, what is it, massacre that it had on Black Wall Street? We, at one point in time, we had it built up where Black businesses were thriving, not just one business was thriving, but it had streets of Black right. businesses, banks, grocery stores, and it was pouring back into the community. What mm -hmm. happened to the times back in the 90s, we had a whole thing that would take the village to raise a child. We have to begin to put the power back into the right hands to the people. We see right now, we got a mom who is saying, hey, I'm building this from the ground up. I need help with funding. We say mm -hmm. all this Hollywood money going to the right things. Y'all are standing in line for a pair of Jordans, for a pair of Jordans to go on your feet, but you want to put $5 onto a foundation. These people are dying, as we said, behind the wall. Does it happen all the time in the street? Sometimes it happens in the jail. And don't let it happen to you for it matters to you. So, yeah. Melissa, one more time, put it back on the screen as well, please, for the fundraiser. Y'all, we have for ourselves, we're getting funding the community. 
And it can't just be about when y'all see a GoFundMe up. Stop posting up or when you see a GoFundMe until you donate. No, there are five or one C's out here or ask for donations. If you only have five dollars, that's okay. Something is better than giving absolutely nothing. And guess what? If you can't give, share. Right. That's free. Yeah. Yes. Just telling someone about it, it right. means a lot. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, and like I said before, you know, it's we we try to do what we can. We're a very small organization. We've been uh, up and running for three years. And uh, like I said, Boots been on the ground since, you know, five days in after my son was uh, left to die on a jail cell floor. And um, I've done a lot. We've done a lot. Um, but we need to do more. You know, um, we just need to do more. And uh, I've got a new team that I'm building up right now. Uh, we've got a, a new interim CEO, Pastor Ronald Evans. Uh, he has joined us uh, just a couple of months ago. Uh, we've got an impacted family on our board now, Tara Lucier. Uh, she's up in uh, Bemidji. Uh, we've got uh, a volunteer coordinator, Lisa Johnson, who is phenomenal. Um, we, we've got a lot of great people uh, helping, but we need more help. And the more help that we need is actually funding so that we can hire specific people to put in position because it's hard to find free help, <laughs> let alone good help. But free help is definitely hard to find. So that's where we're at. And uh, I, I will just continue to pray uh, that God will touch the hearts of those who are hearing uh, this message on tonight and be able to, like you said, $5, whatever it is, every little bit helps. Oh, and um, I want to say this too real fast. We yes. know people who are watching this. Yes. Don't get it twisted, y'all. Um, you have to educate yourselves when it comes to civil lawsuits. Please do not oh. get it twisted. Notice mm -hmm. he just said that he had three kids. So y'all mm -hmm. got to think. If he had three kids, where I think that money goes to? It ain't sitting in her pocketbook for her to go oh. shopping and stuff. He got three kids to take care of. That mm -hmm. part when it comes to education on our side of the community, because y'all are saying, say, well, she got a settlement for his kids. He got right. kids who got to grow up, but they don't got a dad anymore. So therefore, for her to do the work, she's the funding of the community to keep getting funded in. Am I right or wrong? Absolutely. Okay. And you know, I'll we just had a couple of families, and not to put anybody's business out there, but you know, when they don't have insurance for their loved one, I didn't have insurance for my son. I never thought I was going to bury my son. I had life insurance for me thinking mm -hmm. he, he was going to bury me, but it was the mm -hmm. other way around. So you're caught off mm -hmm. guard and you're like, oh, you know, you, you, you're not expecting that. another expense. Yeah. Exactly. So mm -hmm. we've been able to, you know, help some of these families with some of their funeral expenses. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, we can't help everybody because we have a small budget, but as more, you know, more resources and more help that we can get and put into this pool, then they will know that, wow, Be Their Voices is not only about, you know, bringing about justice and, and making re uh, real reform, real jail reform, mm -hmm. but they are also standing in solidarity with these hurting families and and they are advocating for them and helping them in any way that they see fit that they can help. I, I, I don't know. When my son died, nobody was really talking about what was happening behind the wall. I didn't hear, I mean, of course, not that I was listening to what was happening in the jails, but it, it was even more pronounced. I'm like, wow, okay, let me dig in. How many other people have died behind the bar, you know, behind uh, closed doors? And when I started to do the digging, that's when I was like, oh my God, this has become an epidemic. And mm -hmm. because nobody sees what's going on behind closed doors, the, out of yeah, sight, out of that. mind. Yep. Uh -huh. And then the stigma that that comes along when your baby dies in the jail. Oh, well, he was in jail. I got off of Facebook. You know why? Because people were so mean. They were uh -huh. so cruel. I was already so crushed that my only child died in such an egregious way as if uh -huh. that wasn't enough to suffer. But to have people come uh -huh. back and then come and nasty. say, well, she uh -huh. they were very nasty. Well, uh -huh. she, she obviously she didn't love him enough. She didn't do uh -huh. what she could have. He wasn't raised right. 
she wasn't raised right. Exactly. She didn't love them enough. Whatever it was that they said, it was so hurtful. And, and I said, okay, well, I know how to change this narrative. And I just got off Facebook. And I haven't been on Facebook since. Been the best thing I've ever done. So people say, well, how come you're not on Facebook? I got my reason. And that is the reason. Because if you're going to be that mean, no, I can turn it off. You are you get to come in my space because I allow you in my space. Right. But if you're going to come in my space and talk to me and, my, and about my baby like that oh no you don't get to be in this space you know so i just turned it off so we've got other ways that we need to you know uh that we can get our word out there about what we're doing uh instagram and and other you know efforts uh word of mouth you know that's the best uh, market uh marketing uh, tool is somebody didn't heard somebody say something about be their voices and and these families that need this type of uh support so we're, we're doing the best we can but we need we need more help so anything that the community can do, we're, we're very grateful. So, yeah. so before before we go, I, I'd like to issue a challenge. You know, we about action on this podcast. We um listen every week. We hear stories about so many um, injustices that have been done to people. Yes, unfortunately, a lot of them look like us. us. Right. Yes. Um, if anybody in our listening audience has a family member that's currently incarcerated, um, we're challenging you to go onto the website and donate. And uh, Ms. Delshia um, shared that her son's birthday will be coming up and he was born on December 29th. We challenging people to make a donation of $29 this evening. You got it. You got it. If you don't got it, figure out how to get it. You got it. I'll figure out how to get it. You got it. If you're a returning citizen, we challenging you to make a $29 donation this evening. If you have ever been impacted by the uh, uh, system, I was going to say enslavement system, but I'm going to say incarceration system. Yep, that's it. Make a donation for a worthy cause. This sister has shared with us. She poured out her heart this evening and letting us know she's working, as Latoya said, from the ground up to build something where our loved ones, when they find themselves behind the wall and more of us, there's more people incarcerated in this country than any other country in the world. And we ain't nowhere near the most populated country. So we, when it comes to having people incarcerated, make a donation. Make a donation. Don't let, don't let this go by and say, ah, you know, no, we are the ones we've been waiting for. And unless we help one another to build a system to fight this unjust system, it's not going to happen. It is not going to happen. But I believe that we can do it. What we have done, we can do. We have done, like Latoya said, we have built Black Wall Streets and and cities and and churches and hospitals and schools. We can do this, but we have to be consistent about doing it. And one way to be consistent is our audience is to make a donation to this cause. That's right, that's right, that's right. And just real fast, you guys, going to wrap this thing up. As always, I'm going to say we are about action. So not only do you want to donate to the fundraiser, but don't stop. Don't let it be a one-month thing. This work mm-hmm. is ongoing. Until they stop what they're doing behind these walls or stop killing us in these streets, the work is still going to be ongoing. Uh, we also have a few, a couple other call of actions we want to display tonight as well. As I said, we're all about that action. Okay, I guess we're going to go Fred Cox first. Thank you. Um, as y'all see, we have a flyer here coming up for Fred Cox. They have court on December the 4th. Be sure to visit uh, Tanika Shannon's page on Facebook and on Instagram. You can just type in hashtag Fred Cox. Um, this flyer will come up as well as any other court support you need in that area. Even if you're not in North Carolina, but you're somebody who's in the area, be sure to share it with them. As always, you make time for what you want. If you can't share it on your page, uh, please share it on a different social media website. Um, Melissa, you want to go to the next one, please? 
All right, we also have court coming up for, which one? Okay, here we go. We have court also coming up for, um, Green. Okay, okay, I'm so sorry for Lionel Green. Uh, this is going to be on September the 20th. That's right on the corner. Fast. So this is out here in uh, Maryland. This is over here in our area in DMV. So I know it's when y'all here in DMV area, you guys, it's in the DMV area, nine o'clock, September. Right. Oh, is that wrong? Really yeah. That's the That's wrong date then. Hold on. That's the wrong date. No. See how the court is coming up. Okay. There's a court is coming up for him. I want to say it's on the 27th. So maybe I have the wrong flyer. That's my bad. Okay. No worries. So I'll, I'll share the right one. There's a court that's coming up for him. So I'm like, wait, I'm reading that way. I'm like, what are we in? So, <laughs> okay. Go to the next one. All right. And last but not least, we also have it here for the Andrew Joseph Foundation down there in uh, Florida uh, for grief support. As always, the work is hard. We all know that. You got to get time to the mental health. Got, uh, self care is also the best care. So, if you're in Florida, you can support this event as well. Please go down there for that event. And we have, we have one more as well, Melissa. All right. Life after the impact. <laughs> you know that noise there. We're going to have our first live event over at Busboy and Poets in Washington, D.C., um, the Anacostia location, right, Roxanne? That's correct. All right, we got on here on November the 14th at 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. You guys, the tickets are be are um they're free, but you gotta get it through Eventbrite. We have a few more left um on the link as well. Be sure to visit our website and our page to grab your ticket to Eventbrite. We are gonna um also send out other details as well as the event comes closer. We're gonna also ask for any other organizations who are maybe local to the DMV area to please reach out to. I'll reach out to them as well too. But do I listen to this podcast as well? And you can join us. Please feel free to come out there as well on the night to join us as well. And any other impacted families that are in DMV area, please, please, please uh, join us that night for some very important discussion. Yes, yes, we would like for your participation in the discussion as we talk about what's next in this fight for justice. Cause we gotta, we gotta be doing what we gotta be playing chess, not checkers. We gotta be proactive, not reactive, right? So we had to come up with some strategies to fight this system. We gotta build the system to fight the system, right? And so we would like to have your participation show up. I think we only got space is limited, so get your ticket. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait. Yeah, what up, was that all the announcements we had, Latoria? It was. And last but not least, y'all, just one more time, Mel, you can flash on the screen for us one more time, the fundraiser. Again, the podcast tonight was about the level he's at, was, he, got, he died behind bars, okay? So behind the walls, his mom said, a lot of times we think about police brutality, we think about what happened inside the streets. It's not what that happened at. It's happened behind, he was in jail. Therefore, we're asking, please, for the support of the community to please donate, 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 donate. If you can't donate, please share this website. And don't just share it for tonight. This work is ongoing. And today, change the laws and they change what's going on behind bars, whatnot. It's not to any of, any of us. So please do not wait until it happens to you for it to matter to you. It, uh, his birthday, his mom said, was on, uh, it will be coming up on December the 29th. Yeah. Roxanne, I said we're going to challenge everybody again to donate at least $29 for the cause. If you could do that, please do so. Yes. yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. And okay. December 2nd is the um, day that we're actually having uh, the fundraiser uh, in downtown St. Paul at the Drury Hotel. Uh, and the tickets, meal tickets are $25. So um, if you just want to wait and come then, you know, um, sign up for that, that would be great. Uh, space is limited, but, um, you know, we certainly don't want to turn anybody away and we're looking for sponsors. So anybody that uh, wants to be a sponsor, please just, you know, give us a call or uh, reach out to our volunteer coordinator and they will uh, get me a message. So thanks again, you guys. Um, my, I'm just, I'm so, I'm just so honored. My heart is so happy to know that there are others in this fight with me. And 
that was what caused me to even jump on the bandwagon. Uh, I call her Mama May, but when uh, there was a mother up in Bemidji fighting for what had happened to her son, Tony May Jr., I was like, I got to do this. If that mama can do it, I can do it. And if you can do it, I can do it. So I just thank God for you two, you know, you know, just being out here and standing in the gap for the other mothers. Um, but yes, we, we, we've got to work together, bring it together because we are who we've been waiting for. I love that. You know, it's like, yeah, mm -hmm. we are the help. Amen. So no. the help. you are so right. <laughs> thank you. Oh, well, this real fast way we hang up, you guys. Uh, I'm gonna also I want to link you up with uh, Nora Massey, like I just said, even after like we just said again, we gotta do waiting for it. She's gonna wait for somebody to be able, able to help her understand what's going on with the system. Oftentimes we meet other moms and we're dealing with police brutality on like the streets or whatever, and not mm -hmm. with the behind the jail cells. So that's a little bit different. So when we find these connections, we gotta be able to make, you know match it up and see how we can help each other be in another move forward. So good conversation. Yeah. Yes, yes, it has been. Thank you so much. And then I will be sending you all a couple of other activists, Marvina Hayes. Uh, she very, very involved in prison uh, reform and wrongfully incarcerated folks. David Blinky with uh, IWALK. He's very involved uh, with those that are, uh, you know, mistreated in prisons and and just trying to, you know, be an advocate and a voice for them. So we have, you know, partnered up and we're doing some collaborating uh, right now. And I'm just thanking God for those that have come alongside and said, we, we need to do something together. So yeah, I will be sending you all their contact as well, because I think that they would love to come on and um, talk about what they do and, and what difference they've been making in the community. So thanks again. God bless you all. Peace of God be with you always. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. And we yeah. it's been a pleasure to um, talk with you this evening. Yes. From uh, Life After the Impact, y'all, don't forget to register and vote. That's coming up. And we'll see you next week. Thank Thank you. Bye bye. No, I I tell you, y'all. This is we. This is we. You know, y'all yeah. getting some some more motivation because, like I say, I, I I'm a little bit down the road, and I'm looking for some other young folks to step up that we can pass the baton to because this is a generational fight. Yeah, a generational fight. Yes, it is. And we have to always have to be involved in this. We all have to be involved. So if you can't give a dollar, give, come to the meetings. Listen right. to the podcast. You know, share voice, the flyers. Voice. Yeah, share the flyer. Just make mm -hmm. it known that you care, that you mm -hmm. care, that you care. Mm -hmm.